in this world. We sort of turn on the news literally on an hourly basis and something changes and uh, racing's done its best to sort of hang in in certain parts. But obviously, we've been pushed into a few corners just the way the world has unfolded and Greyhound sort of took their turn yesterday, if you'd like to explain where we are. Yeah, sure, Ryan. I think everyone saw what happened over the weekend and like you said, it is changing on a daily basis, but particularly changed after Friday. Um, and obviously the advent of, of people not really taking notice of what's occurring in the world. So we were actually forced to go to stage two, which was um, a cut down version. We obviously cut 70% of racing in our tracks. We're running out of seven regions or 10 tracks um, in order to regionalise the industry. What that does is dogs um, are to race in their regions. Um, there obviously, um, there'll be cases where um, accentuating circumstances which people need to, to write to Greyhound Racing New South Wales because it will be very close at times. But the idea is to buy secure those um, facilities and ensure the safety of our participants. And more importantly, it ensures if this situation does get worse, which everyone's saying it is, um, we will able to be keep racing and keep feeding our, our participants. Tony, uh, obviously, um, you know, the, the world of betting turnover is a big thing um, and going forward, it's going to make an impact. There's no doubt about that. Is there some contingency plan in place? Have we got something where we can, you know, go back to the government or whatever there can be down the track to, to sort of roll us back through it? I think if we are forced to stop racing, the government full well knows the response of our participants. They want an explanation and the kind of compensation that keeps them alive, you know, with hope and money. So I think what we've done as an industry, um, you know, we're not like the football codes, which stopped um, this week and we saw the NRL. We don't have the human interaction and we can operate remotely with very few people. So we've shown that, that you know, in this climate, yeah, we've, we've stayed ahead of the game. I think the fewest people required to run the sport, I mean, we, we've got now a level of 50 people at any meeting, which is very low, and with the best biosecurity measures in place, um, you know, we're complying with health and government advice. It, it's world's best practice. So the problem for us is that, um, you know, we've sort of like an NRL scenario. We have um, not a huge war chest. We have some money, but um, we need to keep racing. Um, otherwise, um, you know, if we can't race for a period, it's a human and welfare catastrophe for thousands of people and animals, which is why we're saying the government, we can actually manage this with a really low impact and the safety to all our staff and participants. Mate, obviously you've looked at the, the map of New South Wales and where regional numbers of greyhounds are physically trained. Um, as you say, you're in seven regions, there's 10 tracks. Yep. Um, can yep. you read through which of those tracks that will continue racing from today? Yeah, yeah sure. So um, those those zone regions, the following, you know, will be Bathurst, Bulleye, Dapdo, Dubbo, Richmond, Grafton, the Gardens, Goulburn, Gunnedah, and um, and Wagga Wagga. Um, look, there'll be different schedules for those actual um, facilities. There'll be some will race more than often. Look, I think this is important to note, Ron, that we've done this on the basis of regions, and um, we, you know, there's been a few clubs that have come to us with disappointment. Of course, there'll be disappointment, but our responsibility is the best interest of greyhound racing in New South Wales, and we've attacked this. You know, we've obviously had expert advice. We've attacked this in a way to keep the industry alive. And if we can keep going through this coal crisis, it'll be a monumental um, achievement and everyone's got a future industry to be proud of. So I think that's what we've been mindful of as opposed to, oh, you know, my club shut. We just need to support racing and ask participants to support them. The non-tabs are obviously not going ahead, but there's going to be racing for them as well. So their dogs are just as important as others. Now, obviously, um, you know, with the with the suspension at the moment of Wentworth Park, um, obviously your, your major prize money track. How's your prize money going to be structured? Yes, yeah, sure. So, so now we've obviously made a rule, and this is also a cost saving to us, so we can preserve 
our organisation to pay prize money in a broader sense. We're only going to have provincial prize money. We've obviously stopped Metal Chipotle and Racing for the time being at Wentworth Park, which is a huge call, um, iconic um, facility. Um, but now we've gone to go with provincial prize money for all those centres, um, including you know dogs of, of non-tab um, that raced the non-tabs before. So I think that's the biggest change, but the prize money... Um, is not cut, but they're all provincial. So what that does is it keeps everyone tracking along um, and keeps the industry going as well as, you know, we've obviously, you mentioned before, a downturn in wagering. Obviously, we tab with the other um, sports like basketball and NRL and others and AFL. That'll have an effect. Um, all the other two codes are still racing. So there has been a 20 to 25 uh, percent downturn in wagering itself. So we need to also save money to ensure our future to, to pay prize money out. Now, obviously, across the state, we've got a lot of people that are in the, the smaller regional areas um, with no non-tab racing. The people that want to keep racing those greyhounds, the grading structures, will that be changed now at a provincial level to cater for those dogs? Um, we'll actually be in touch in regard to, to grading, but there will. What I can say is there will be races for the dogs that that are racing currently at non tabs. So they will the upsell for them will be they will be able to race for tab prize money. I think that's really important. It provides an opportunity for our non tabs. We haven't forgotten about them, but unfortunately at the moment, um, you know the non tabs are a cost to greyhound racing in New South Wales. And as I said, we're in survival mode. We're we're in the fight of our lives. Um, we've shown yesterday we went to stage two to ensure our future, and we have a responsibility for the livelihoods of all participants. So there is some sacrifice, but um, we believe we've got a, a strong future given we get through this. Now, obviously, borders are closed. You know, Queensland, South Australia, Victoria, as far as I understand, have not closed theirs, but obviously there'll be no crossover of uh, trainers or greyhounds from interstate. No, there's no. We made a hard and fast rule that there's there'll be no interstate dogs accepted for nominations. And I think, look, at the end of the day, we've got a social responsibility um, to the government and us as an industry to keep people safe. And obviously, you know, travelling now, as we've seen from the federal government and state, it's only essential travel. So we're trying to, where we can, reduce that. Um, and that, you know, obviously we've closed the borders. I noticed Queensland closed the borders, did close the borders as well. So I think it's a, a definitely a safety procedure and a biosecurity procedure. Mate, obviously a few years ago in New South Wales, when the ban was first announced, there was a, a big drop in the world of breeding. And we were just sad at the moment, Tony, because we were just starting to see that the last 18 months start to lift and we we're getting numbers back through again to, to sort of drag on forward. Um, obviously, the breeding arm, we can't afford it to stop too hard at the present moment. So we need to put you know things in place and encourage people to keep breeding. Yeah, that's exactly right. We we got to a really good place. Obviously, with the closure and there was, you know, there was overbreeding the closure. We really got that under control to a number we could really manage, particularly with our rehoming program through Greyhounds as pets. So I think it's important people have faith. Um, I think GR and SW have shown um, amazing leadership to go to stage two to ensure this future so I just ask people and participants not to panic I know this is not an ideal situation but the idea is for us to come through this then we can really take the industry forward so um, you know it's tough times there's a lot of battlers out there I know they're struggling but one thing they can be assured and rest assured is we'll be fighting every day for the future of this industry. Now, obviously, I think I did read on your announcement last night, um, participant numbers, and when I say participant, I'm referring to actual trainers. There's a limit now on the number of those people that are coming to a track? Yeah, there's 50 um, participants that are limited, and that's just for the safety of, of the staff itself and in case of any outbreak. We can contain it in each region. I think to, to be totally honest, and I said it on the big sports breakfast this morning, I mean, you've got more chance of catching coronavirus going to a supermarket than a biosecured greyhound track, and that's all ser being serious, and a remote and regional greyhound track. So I think um, what that does is if there's another stage and there's a reduction in numbers, that greyhounds are really well placed. We're a totally unique sport. We really are, where you know we have very little human interaction. We're only allowing 50 people. There's probably 10 
10 other staff, we can get under 50 total people on track, including staff in the future if we need to. So I think it's a general step and we're probably showing government that, you know, we've got the appropriate biosecurity in place and we can, we can keep going. And obviously, Tane, at all these difficult times and, you know, we saw when that ban was first announced, people's mental state doesn't always get the, you know, the right thought processes and obviously we've got procedures in place that if people need to talk, they're only a phone call away. Yeah, of course. So if people um, do need help, like I'm in Greyhound, based in New South Wales, we've got um, access to various services. We've obviously offered that to our staff internally. It is unsettling times and unprecedented times, but all I say to those participants is, you know, be patient, um, support what we're doing, and I'm sure the industry will come out the other end. We are a resilient mob, Ron, and I'm sure you know that very, very well. Tony, I suppose uh, in these times, I can only say good luck to everyone and um, obviously mate it's uh, one of those we didn't see coming I was always promised myself our first interview on radio while I was doing this show with the, for the boys was uh, to sit there and have a few laughs and a joke but unfortunately it's and this is the way it's turned up today and you know we thank you for everyone that's done and your own staff mate um, I wish them all the very best of luck and it's difficult for everyone I, I know what it's like working from home myself and all these sort of things and we're just going to bat on, but I say to all our participants, um, stay strong, look after the dog, number one, and uh, as yourself as well. And, uh, Tony, I uh, thank you. And, obviously, the, the phone lines are open any time you, you want to speak, mate, or, uh, you know, certainly please contact. I appreciate all your words, Ron. And, look, um, please don't forget that I am running a Q&A every day, so I'm responding to participants' questions every day. It's update at jurinsw.com.au. I'm happy to personally answer any queries or questions from participants um, in order to give them the confidence that the industry will remain. So, look, appreciate all your words, Ron. Tough times, but we've got to stick together, as you know.